In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how we can create box plots, also known as box and whisker plots, inside matplotlib. All right, and at the end of the video, I'll show you a bit of a bonus, a bonus section on violin plots, which are a kind of kind of like a variant of box plots. Okay, they just look visually different. Otherwise, the code is 90% the same. Okay, so without any further ado, let's begin. So here we have some data. Okay, and we'll be using this data to create box plots. So as usual, matplotlib allows us to create box plots and any other type of graph really easily. So all we really need to do is pass in our data set in here. Okay, and let's run our code. The box inside the box plot function, we just pass in our data set. Okay, and here's our very basic box and whisker plot. Okay, now let me just talk a bit about this and what this means and what are these circles over there? What is this line? Okay, let's talk about that now. So basically, a box in the script plot shows us the following pieces of information. Okay, here's this image from my website. Okay, so we have a minimum, we have a maximum, we have a median line. Okay, the median value in the data set. Then we have the lower quartile and the upper quartile. The upper quartile is the 75th percentile inside the data, just like the median is the 50th percentile. The lower quartile is the 25th percentile. And the min and the max are cal calculated using a special formula, which is generally this. Min is equal to lower quartile, okay, the lower quartile value minus 1.5 multiplied by the IQR, the interquartile range. And the interquartile range is actually the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, okay? And the max is the upper quartile plus 1.5 multiplied by IQR. Now that we have a better idea of what the box and whisker plot is, let's take another look at the graph. So here's our graph. This orange line is the median line. The line above it is the upper quartile. The line below it is the lower quartile. And this here is the max. And this here is the min. Okay. And these two dots up there are outliers. They don't lie within the range of the min and the max. Okay, they're basically considered outliers because they deviate too much from the rest of the data. And if you take a look at the data, we can see that there's these two outliers here, 96 and 91. They really deviate from the rest of the values. So that's why we get these outliers. Okay, so that's the basic concept. Now, as usual, we're going to spend most of the time in this video discussing how we can customize this box plot using the various functions, the various methods, the various parameters that matplotlib gives us. Okay, so let's begin. I'm going to show you the word parameter first. Okay, and this can... Okay, sorry, it's the wrong one. We need to pass in false. This basically makes it non-vertical. It makes it horizontal, okay, like so. So if you prefer this, then you can go ahead and plot it like this instead, okay? And other than this, we can do some cool stuff like show uh, flyers, okay? This means disable the outliers. So if we do this, then the outliers will be disabled. So it's basically gonna ignore them. And you can see here that our x-axis only stretches out from 10 to about 80. It doesn't go up to 90 anymore because we're not including the outliers, okay? Another parameter that we can use is show means. And this is pretty handy because normally we just see the median, right? But with this, we can also see the mean. So if I run this, okay, so that's the mean. Okay, it shows up as this triangle. But personally, I don't really like that form too much. And let's just disable this, these two parameters. Okay, just so we can see it in its native form. Okay, so this is what the mean looks like. It looks better on the vertical chart. But we can actually make this a bit better. We can say mean line is equal to true. And what this is going to do is make a line instead of, you know, that small triangle. 
So this might be something that you prefer, okay? It's, I think I like this version a bit better. All right, so what else can we do? Well, we can also change the color. Now, unlike the unlike most graphs in matplotlib, changing the color here is a bit harder. So what we need to do is create an array. Okay. And okay, you know what? Let's before we change the color for this, let's uh plot multiple graphs. Okay, let's plot more than one. I don't think there's a color parameter in here. Yeah, there isn't. Okay, so what, what we'll do is plot multiple graphs because I'll then I'll show you how we can give each one of them a different color. I'm gonna plot multiple box and whisker plots on the same graph, okay? So let's begin. I, I need to get rid of this. I'm gonna make multiple data sets now, okay? I'll call them data set one is equal to, and I'm gonna use NumPy to generate some random data, okay? It has this useful function called normal, which can generate data in a normal distribution for us. So I'll just be using this, okay? Just gonna duplicate this over a bunch of times, change their names, and just change a bunch of values here. The first two parameters are basically generating the values, and the third parameter is the number of values that we want generated. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna generate 100 values for each data set, okay? And this first parameter here is roughly the me the median and the other the second parameter is something like the distribution I can't really remember what this is for right now. Let me see. Uh location, scale, and size. Well yeah, if you know distributions then you'll know what that means. Alright, so ninety then over here I'll do a hundred, then just change the scale a bit. Okay, just for some variety. Okay, and now what I'll do is pass in an array of all these data sets. Okay, data set three, data set four. Okay, cool. And if I run this code now, there's our data. Okay, so we see some outliers here and there, and this is all randomly generated. So if I run this multiple times, we'll get a different graph. A different plot each time okay pretty cool right so now I'm gonna define an array of colors okay four colors in here in hexadecimal form one for each one of our box and whisker plots okay and let's do zero zero ff zero zero this should be blue this should be green and then this one is going to be red and for the last one let's just go with the combination ff zero zero ff okay and now we need to add these colors into our plot so what i'll do is actually save the return object from plt.boxplot into this variable called box and now what i'll do is for patch color in zip and that's a that's a built-in function by the way zip it's a pretty handy function you should check it out later so what i'll do here is just i create over in this format and i'll explain this a bit in a second all right cool so what i'm doing here is basically combining uh zip you know what it means to basically combine these we're combining the boxes over here because this box parameter here it actually has, you know, you can actually use it to individually access each box plot. The boxes thing over here, if I just print this out, you'll notice that it actually gives us a reference to the objects. Okay, let me just comment this out. Let's uh, run this for a second, and you'll see that we can actually access... What is wrong with this thing? Come on. All right, so yeah. You can see that we have four objects here. And these are the individual objects, okay? The individual box and whisker plots. So these can actually be accessed and you can change their settings individually. That's also a pretty cool option. Right, anyways. So let's just run this code now, okay? Set face color is basically used to do the color. And the color parameter here is coming from this colors array. Okay, this is just a fancy way of, you know, doing all this. You can do it in a, in a much simpler way if you want to. But the end result, 
Huh. Has matplotlib updated? It doesn't have the set face color parameter anymore. I recently I recently updated my matplotlib version, so maybe it's changed. This is a bit new to me. Okay. All right, that's a bit surprising. Let me see. Is there? No, okay, hold on. I'm just gonna pause the video for a second and go see what exactly has changed in matplotlib. All right, so I just double checked on my website and it's actually a very silly mistake I made. We just need to turn the patch artist parameter to true, okay? And this will now work. There, cool. Okay, and let's just turn off the mean line because it looks a bit weird. Okay, with the colors. And there, that looks better. All right, so this is just a few basic customizations that we can make. There's obviously much more, but I think I gave you a good enough of an intro and a bunch of basic things. There's one more thing that you can do, which is actually important, which is the WIS parameter. I just remembered this. So you know how normally there's a 1.5 factor by which you multiply the interquartile range? You can actually reduce that factor. It's normally 1.5, but you can narrow this down to make it more stricter with the outliers. So if I narrow this down, then we'll end up with more outliers, as you can see. See? And yeah, so that's a pretty cool parameter. Now, as promised, there's one last thing I want to show you which is the violin plots. So let me just remove some of that stuff and I'm going to change this to violin plot. Now this is just a different way of kind of showing the same data. It looks pretty cool. Uh, I'll admit it. Visually it looks uh, good and it kind of shows the distribution over here. And yeah, it's just a different way of showing it and much of the same parameters really work here the same way that they do inside box and whisker plots. We can show median. It's not shown by default. Okay. And it's going to show up there as a line. Then we can also show the mean. We can do show means. We can show that true as well. All right. And that looks a bit off because they're the same color, I think. So yeah, it's probably not a good idea to show both of these at the same time unless there's a way to change their color or something. Well, yeah, that's just what I wanted to show you in today's video. I showed you box and whisker plots. I showed you violin plots. I showed you a few basic and important customizations that you could make on them. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you like the content and want to see more matplotlib things in the future, more matplotlib charts, graphs, and different things like the event system, the animation system in matplotlib, all that kind of cool stuff, subscribe to the channel, all right? Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you're interested in and what you want to see in matplotlib, all right? And we'll see if we can get, get around to doing that, okay? See you guys in a later video. Bye then.